about the child care slash first children finance initiative meeting um, and set an agenda for that meeting. So we're doing that meeting on the 30th at 530 here at the community meeting center. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it is. It's, 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 the, it's yeah. the fifth month. Yeah, so exactly. yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So 530 at the community center. So we need 15 to 20 people to hopefully show up. The entire council will be there. I don't know how much they would consider those as volunteers. Hopefully they would. Um, I know it's been passed around and shared online. There were some flyers handed out at the fall festival. They have it hanging at at least one of the churches on at Grace Place. Um, I, I mailed a few to some of the child care businesses that are in town that come up when you Google them. I, I contacted the school. They weren't willing to hand it out. Um, it didn't meet some guidelines that they use for approving their handouts and stuff, so they just weren't willing to do it. So former there, but um, trying to get it out as many other ways as I could. If you guys have other ideas or if you need more copies, let me know. It'd be nice to hopefully get enough people there. I mean, I guess that would have to be the first thing on the agenda is do we have enough volunteers? Right. And is there interest in this? Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe some general information because you know, there's not much on the flyer, but they, you know, they did their own research. Um, I don't know if you would recommend watching any of the videos during that thing or if we just kind of do a summary for them. I think just a summary. A summary and then to find out if there's anybody interested in helping to develop more child care, you know. Um, okay, like interested in committing to, yeah. I will send it out with the chamber info. info okay, yeah. When I do that this week, yeah, that goes out with the group. Yeah, yeah. Do you so, think they'd be getting interest if you sent it out to all of the CCC employees? I know you guys are in the child care. Yeah. yeah, we'll put it up in our boards and that. It wouldn't do anything for like our field folks who don't live anywhere right. near here, but. Um, we got some local employees. Yeah, our, yeah. our shop and all the office for sure. We'll post that up. Yeah, absolutely. Is there a flyer up at the venue? You know, I went to check. I didn't see it, so I'm going to bring one up there. <laughs> and was we have any on the Yeah, so I'll work on kind 
kind of a summary so that it helps you guys before the meeting just to see if you have any other input or any other things that I forgot to add in that. And, you know, I mean, it's going to be pretty just informational and formal at that meeting just to kind of see if people show up, see if there's any interest in moving this forward. So, and the main reason we're doing this is to pursue increased child care efforts in the community. Yep. Yeah, because the, the first thing they do, like we were talking, is that need study. So I'm, I'm assuming the need is there. <laughs> just well, just by really Facebook did, calls did to end things. Yeah. They really did one like five years ago. Three to five, yeah, yeah. something like that. And it's definitely needed in the area, so I would assume we would have similar needs to Waverly, but I think that's just part of the process. You have to go through that piece of it. So right. um, right, let's get one through the grade. Did you work on the center for software? So we, our ultimate goal, I think, would be to get some funding or something to help get some more child care centers or in-home care or support for that. Support yeah. for that, because it could be go like both education ways. and support for yeah. in-home. Yeah. It's not that we want to take it away from them, but right. we want to help. We want more spots for kids to go. Right. Um, so I think that we that portion of it would be just kind of summary of what we're looking to do and see if there's any interest in people committing to this and yeah. kind of signing up because we need to be part of this team 15 to 20 together yeah. for what like a year mm, uh at least i would i thought, I thought there i thought they had a time frame when you kind of went over it but there is a time frame there's going to be work that group working on doing all this but we need the people in the group you know before we can start you know even pursuing the next step um also what there's what they see is there what do we need in this community what what do they sense is the need for the child care situation or what you know do they need more support do they need this do they need that what do we what do they need or what do we need it would be helpful to have some of the actual in home providers and stuff be there. I did send one to the kid care center too, but mm -hmm. it'd be helpful to get some of the providers here. So, you know, if there is stuff or education or support that they need that we can help them with, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We also have the census data for that too. Yeah, you know, that's awesome. Do we have any kind of an idea on the head count that we would need? I mean, certainly. I was just thinking just because uh, the average age is somewhere around like 31, 32 in Montrose. So that's kind of the age that people are starting to have kids now. So maybe the need isn't there now, but yeah. 10 months from now. <laughs> or in the next five years, years even. I think there is a need right now, though. But. It seems like it just from some of the posts that we've seen around on Facebook and stuff, people are looking for child care for this or that or different ages and stuff. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like the need is definitely there. I know a lot of people who are going to other communities for child care. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. You know, when you took Jackson, where was that water down? Yep, that was pretty fine. It's been like that for a long time. I took him to Delaware, yeah. and then we'd come back to her too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I was old enough by the time we moved here that I could just do like the the care or like after school or spark or whatever it was that was around um, but yeah yeah if you, if you make those phone calls and you call from down all the way to howard lake there's nobody that has openings and especially for like they, infants I yeah, think that's yeah, really hard infants is the worst one and they've always got a waiting list so mm -hmm. or even um families a lot we have people in the situation they have to go somewhere else for the, if they have another, another baby, baby. Oh, what a hassle. Yeah. until they can get old enough to get into that other yeah. yeah so it is a big need around yeah. here when they have strict limits on the infants particularly so mm -hmm. okay. anything else on that yeah i'll send some stuff out and then just let me know if you guys think of anything that i should include or something anything we get some people back. All right, uh, new business, preserve tip discussion with Mr. Shane.
Um, what I brought and what I'll speak from is a tip projection I did oh, maybe a couple months ago. Uh, ultimately, the developer kind of acted in, in one in some sense for what would be generated in a tax increment district. Um, if you were successful in requesting one, the city was inclined to provide tax increment assistance. To start from the top, tax increment financing is capturing new property taxes related to new development that occurs after a TIP district is created. So, an example of the preserve, if the TIP district is created today, that market value that exists today will continue to pay taxes to the city, county, and school district in the same manner that it always has. So you don't lose tax base by putting it in the TIP, TIP district. You forgo the benefit of a new tax base until you get rid of the TIP district. Housing tax increment districts can exist for up to 26 increment collections. Uh, 26 years ultimately of capturing that new property tax that's generated during that time. Traditionally, most housing subsidies haven't been for that duration. Uh, you know, new construction, a lot was done in that 15 years of assistance and mostly for rental housing you would see. I have some community clients that have been active in using it for owner-occupied housing and <clears throat> In order for the city to be able to capture increment from an owner-occupied housing unit, ultimately there's income restrictions that apply to 95% of the units. And that income restriction only applies to the first occupant. That income restriction is for two or fewer in a family, $124,900 per year in gross household income. For three or more, it's $142,635 in 2023. And so a unit sold to a first occupant would have to be sold to somebody at those income levels, or you'd have to remove that unit from the TIF district because under state statute, you wouldn't be able to capture the new property tax. So typically what the developer is doing is Generally, they're considering two lot prices, a lot price for those that qualify and a lot price that's higher for those that don't qualify in order to uh, pass along the savings that they're able to achieve and hopefully sell more lots and develop homes more quickly. Um, I would say that projects I've worked with have been a mixture with regard to some being a high percentage being sold to qualified uh, by income, which <clears throat> these limits aren't, uh, the, I mean, they've been applied in this vicinity in Howard Lake, for example, uh, in some of the homes that they constructed. Now, the home price has gone up a lot since that was initially conceived in the <clears throat> district, but uh, at the time they were, they were seen to be doing okay with the subsidy that they were using with a owner occupied housing TIF district. As the city likely has no interest at all in developing the infrastructure, usually the developer is using it as a means to recoup some of that cost and putting in the infrastructure ultimately to reduce the cost of the home so that they can sell more. Uh, for that, they have to agree to meet these income requirements because those are imposed by state statute. If we're redeveloping an area where we were tearing something down, we could create a different type of district that wouldn't have income restrictions, but for housing, we do for most of what we have to work with. Once the house is qualified, the first occupant has been determined to meet the income requirement, which is determined at sale by the developer and they submit an affidavit to the city saying this unit is occupied by somebody that qualifies by income. That's all that needs to be done as far as monitoring income. Uh, that home can change hands at any time and remain in the TIF district and does not have to be sold to somebody that meets these income requirements. It's only the first occupant. 
and then you can capture that increment for up to 26 years. Some cities have created a district like this, provided a defined subsidy for an initial project, kept the district open because with housing, you have the ability to take increments from one district and use them to develop additional income qualified housing. So, um, for rental property, the income restriction is different. What uh, the developer had indicated in this instance was that they were going to do an owner occupied project. And so they said they were going to have 174 total units. And I asked for how fast are you going to fill those? And they indicated 18 units per year. And so this net revenue stream on the far side is based on those assumptions and your 2023 tax rate. Now, do I expect that we're going to reimburse the developer $8,701,780? Likely not. And it's the term of that subsidy that I indicate to most folks is what you should focus on. How long are you willing to forego the benefit of the new property tax to have this housing development take off? Are they asking for 26 years? They haven't said anything to me yet. Yeah, that's what they want. Yes. Yeah, they like that. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think I heard a, a yeah. set number yet either. No. Anytime I'm asked, uh, and I, I, they haven't indicated a term, but anytime I'm asked, I say on um, new construction like this, the typical subsidy duration is somewhere in that 15 year duration period. And that's, <laughs> but each, each deal is negotiated individually based on what that community wants to do. And so uh, ultimately, you know, that development were to take off, it's going to create a fair amount of tax base. And ultimately, that's what would be captured if it met that 18 units per year. So if it met that 18 units per year, potentially they could be done building everything in time, correct? Yes. <clears throat> So what usually happens, uh, I provided the city with a, a sample application. Mm -hmm. uh, and ultimately, if they submit that application, you know, generally, my recommendation is before we set about creating a TIF district, we at least negotiate the general terms for assistance. Otherwise, we're wasting a lot of time. Uh, if we can't come to an agreement, you know, I go through lots of other stuff to determine that we're not going to proceed. And so, uh, and, and fundamentally, I'd say really, you know, we don't know what the pace of development is going to be. And so the amount of the subsidy based on the most rapid pace of development that could occur might be a rather large number. Uh, I tend to focus more on the duration of the subsidy than the size of the number because developers are going to focus on the number to make that as big as they can because ultimately, you know, they do this because they think they're going to build them all really fast. And sometimes it happens and lots of times it doesn't. And so, Ultimately, we let them focus on that number. And our, you know, what we should focus on as a community is how long are we for going to tax? So ultimately, <coughs> you know, at this point, I think we would feel that we're not going to generate any new tax unless we probably jump in and do something because that's sat there for quite a while and we've gone to a few developers that, you know, ultimately decided they couldn't make it work. And so, how long are we willing to go without that new property tax uh, in order to see that proceed? And uh, I think that's a good honest conversation that you have to help set the parameters for what you're willing to do. So that needs to come from the council? Well, ultimately, yes. That's who authorizes execution of the development agreement. But 
never heard staff input from the media if that has folks that are outside of this. I don't know if you guys are all council members or not. So mm -hmm. um, some input from the media is always a good thing. So we have no tax right now from it. For all small yeah. amount of tax. Well, city. Or city owned. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a city owned, so there's nothing from it at all. So that wouldn't be a change. Well, when a district's created, the assessor's required to assign the market value as if it were privately owned. And then the tax is not captured based on what that assignment is. And so when I looked it up, it was 528000 so just by transferring it to private ownership, we would capture the taxes if it were valued at five hundred twenty-eight thousand. Projected land. Yes. So, you know, you get the nominal tax compared. It'd be to about sixty-eight hundred bucks. You get versus nothing that you're getting today, just because it's mm -hmm. private ownership. And that happens even if the KIF district's created, because the KIF district, mm -hmm. by state statute, won't us won't accept a zero value. The county is required to assign the value right. as if it were privately owned. So, and then at any point in those fifteen years, a home could get taken out of the KIF district. Yes, uh, it it probably doesn't get taken out. It, well, what probably happens at the time of construction, we understand that the first occupant isn't going to be income qualified, and what we recommend is at the end of each year we pass one resolution identifying those parcels that are sold to non-income qualified folks and we remove those parcels from the district and file that resolution with the county audit. As long as 95 percent of them are meeting. What if they don't meet that 95 percent threshold what happens? It's, we have to kick we have to take parcels out that are not income qualified or homes out that are not income qualified. We have to uh, otherwise that's it. There's no other. Just they get removed from the. Yes. Okay. You know, we're not capturing increment off of it, which means as a city, we are capturing. We are getting the property tax base. So it's. That's a great thing for us if lots are sold, to and homes are built to non-income qualified folks because we're not in the fifth district and we benefit from that tax base right away. So it's really a win-win for the city. You're getting something rather than nothing. Yeah, if you're assuming that nothing's going to happen with that property unless we provide a subsidy, then yes, it would be a win. If you think private, you know, something else can happen privately without city assistance, uh, which it hasn't, right. <laughs> but if you thought it could, you know, then you would say, no, nah, we don't, we shouldn't intervene and we shouldn't subsidize this thing. So, so considering the, the likelihood. And the population and the situations in this area, I think it's it's one of the few ways to go. You know, because I'm I'm just thinking income levels and people who live in out here. You're going to get some who are going to move out from the city who want somewhat things cheaper who can afford it. But if you're looking at people in this area, no. That's my take on it. Am I wrong? No, I mean, you have, you have neighbors further west of you that have successfully, well, Waverly hasn't used it, I don't believe. I, I'm not positive, but I don't work for that city. Howard Lake has, uh, and it, you know, resulted in more house construction than they've had in a long time. So, so. It boils down to what you want to answer. I think it's a ball and it's not a bad idea. Well, increasing population is a, a potential increase in business. Correct? Hope that's <laughs> right. Hopefully that's our goal, right? <laughs> well, it tends to, it tends to be our sticking point in yeah. population. Yep. For yeah, certain mm -hmm. businesses, yeah, they just count numbers. That's it. Well, you might have said it before on this, but what, what is the Qualified house, what is that? What, what is that square foot? What does that cost? It uh, doesn't matter. It's uh, all we have to do is determine that the first occupant meets the income requirement, and then 
doesn't matter how big or small it is, and that's $124,900 for a family of two or fewer, and $143,635 in gross household income for a family of three or more. They need that, it doesn't matter what they're buying or you know, what they're occupying, it's whatever they choose to afford. Now, if you want to back into some, a number, you take 30% of that gross household income, because yeah. that's what they say you can apply to a mortgage. Yeah, that's what <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, these guys were doing an attached product, and you know they're reducing their cost by requesting TIP assistance. And they were at an assessor's estimated market value of 265000 so, yeah, they said that's what their goal is for the sale of them, 265 for all of them. Yeah, so they can hit that. That's going to be the cheapest owner occupied housing product available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That, that would be a great price point for a lot Yes, yeah, it's attached housing, but it's something folks would own. And if they right. want ownership and an opportunity to create equity, that's. So we have like two plexes, triplexes. I think he had four plexes and four plexes. you know stuff like that. It was more than two. It was. And some six and eight. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was mostly four with six and eight on the certain spots. something. It, I mean, I know our community needs uh, something to get get into a house or an equity to move out. Yeah. It's traditional. That's the way it is here. Yeah. Any other discussion on the tip? Um. So. As far as EDA's role in all of this, you said mostly just kind of approving it in, in general. Approving the recommendation. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's entirely appropriate uh, for the EDA to express their opinion with regards to this is an economic development tool. Um, you know, it's uh, ultimately the TIP district and the development agreement are likely actions by the council. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, having input from the EDA is important in that process. And it would be a good place to start with evaluating the application if it's made and the specific request. Uh, we can put a pencil to that and have a good discussion with this group as far as what they're asking and what that means. And uh, if there's a counter, I'd say it'd be better to come from the EDA than negotiate at the council level. Um, if yeah. that seems reasonable. Uh, and so I think all those things are good. I think we get them for an application. Yes, so um, where we're at with that, we still kind of went back and forth with the uh, purchase agreement. Um, we're getting pretty close with that, so I think that'll be soon. And I think once that's signed, they're going to go into their 90 day due diligence, and I think they were going to try to combine some of the stuff with that, like the application, um, so that we can kind of move concurrently and they're going to be ready. So they can be ready to bill. Okay. So. We're good <laughs> Uh, thank you, Jan. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Appreciate it. If there's nothing else, that's it. And uh, our next meeting would be scheduled for Tuesday, November 21st at 12 p.m. here. Um, however, that is the week of Thanksgiving night. Sure. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Um, that's our next meeting. Do your motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, motion passes 3 0. We're adjourned. So, where do you want? Would you want to hold a special meeting if they submit an application?